first three races of 2019 for Pierre Gasly at his new team Red Bull has been quite tough and he has been quite slow to start off with. And given Red Bull's history, I think Pierre Gasly already is under massive pressure to keep his seat. So in today's video, I'm going to analyse how Pierre has started off so poorly, what the issues for Pierre actually are, and whether he will or should be dropped. So if you want the lowdown to Pierre Gasly's poor start at Red Bull, make sure to check out this video. So first, let's start off with how 2019 has gone so far for Pierre and start off with testing. Now, testing was not good, in my opinion, for Gasly because one, he wasn't massively impressive with his speed, even though, of course, in testing speed doesn't really matter. But he had two big crashes, which for one, affected Red Bull's development in terms of bringing parts to the first races. And also, those crashes definitely affected his confidence going into the real 2019 season because for example the first crash was after a very long day of testing and you could tell that red bull were quite disappointed uh, with how that day ended and then his second crash was massive and it affected max verstappen's running on the final day of testing which was just one day later so pierre's start 2019 was not good and really from there, it did not get any better for Pierre Gasly as we got into the first Grand Prix. He wasn't massively quick in practice, but was still doing all right. But then in qualifying, he ended up qualifying in P17. Now, I will defend Gasly because Red Bull caused him to be down in P17 because they did not send him out for a final run in Q1 because they thought Pierre would get through but of course he did not because the track really ramped up in terms of grip and he got knocked out in P17 but the reason Australia was not that impressive for me for Pierre Gasly was because in the Grand Prix where he had nothing to lose and he should have been really aggressive he was passive and wasn't really going for it in the way that I think he should have. The only overtake he made was on Antonio Giovinazzi in the Alfa Romeo, who, by the way, in that Grand Prix, had a damaged car. So it wasn't that impressive of a comeback for Gasly from P17 to P11. And he definitely could have done more, I think, in that Grand Prix. And also, when he was left out longer than other drivers... His pace to try and jump those drivers was not that impressive. And that's why, for me, he ended up finishing in P11 and just couldn't find his way past Danny Kvyat to get into the points. But then we have Bahrain, where Gasly was, in terms of speed, so, so poor. Qualifying down in 13th. Now, I know the Red Bull car in Bahrain was not good. It was definitely struggling and they had issues with the grip of their car. But if you look at where his teammate Max Verstappen was, there was no excuse for Pierre Gasly to be down in P13. No excuse whatsoever. Then in the Grand Prix, he did make a couple good overtaking moves, but only finished in P8. And by the way, he only finished there because the two Renaults retired at the very end and Carlos Sainz had that quite unfortunate accident with Max Verstappen. So in reality, Pierre was not that deserving of a points finish and didn't really have the pace to finish in the points. And Bahrain overall for Gasly was very disappointing and worrying for um, his future Red Bull career but then we go to Shanghai the previous Grand Prix and he did improve his pace improved his result in terms of his position improved but if you look at the pace difference compared to his teammate Max Verstappen he was consistently one second a lap slower now I know Max Verstappen is very very quick and you cannot doubt that but to be a second slower than your teammate cannot be tolerated it cannot be tolerated again i know max is very quick but even if you are slower than max 
if you're going to be you know quite a bit slower you need to be within still say a quarter of a second not one second behind and that was very disappointing from Gasly again in terms of his result p6 in qualifying and p6 in the Grand Prix not bad but in terms of his speed compared to his teammate that was very disappointing and very worrying because there are going to be races this season where Red Bull don't have a one second gap to say the front of the midfield to teams like Renault, Haas and also McLaren so Gasly absolutely does have to improve his speed and that's really for me the main worry when it comes to Pierre Gasly but what exactly for Pierre is going wrong well he came out in the build-up to the Chinese Grand Prix and said that basically the Red Bull does not suit him like the Toro Rosso car did in 2018 now for me that points to two things either the Red Bull car aerodynamically is not quite there yet or his driving style does not suit that Red Bull car now to me the Red Bull car comes off as a car that you need to attack it's a very aerodynamically efficient car it has plenty of grip and to get the best out of it I think you do need to attack with that kind of car now in 2018 for Pierre with the Toro Rosso that car had nowhere near as much grip as the Red Bull does so maybe he's struggling with say the amount of grip the Red Bull has and maybe he's struggling to adapt to that or maybe his driving style is not say suited to attacking the, the track that you need to do in that Red Bull car. For me the thing that's wrong with Pierre Gasly is he just isn't quite good enough for me at that level I've never thought Pierre Gasly was good enough to be a top driver now he should improve and I think he will improve but again I don't think he is a top driver and I don't think he can consistently challenge for podiums like his teammate can I just don't think that is possible so for me Pierre Gasly even though yes he is struggling with the way the Red Bull car handles and is say struggling to adapt to the car in reality I also even if he does you know improve on those areas I just don't think Pierre Gasly in reality is quite good enough to be in that position in that car on the grid and there is a possibility that he could be replaced because let's remember this team Red Bull have a history of dropping drivers very early on even if that driver does not deserve to be dropped think back to Danny Kvyat after four races in 2016 where he was dropped after the Russian Grand Prix where he crashed into Sebastian Vettel twice on the first lap and was replaced by Max Verstappen so it could happen now I'm not saying it should happen but the reason I'm really asking the question and the reason I don't think it is too early to ask this is because Red Bull has a track record of trying to or literally dropping their drivers early in the season because their performance is not quite good enough. But who could replace Pierre Gasly? Well for me there are only two drivers that could replace him one is Danny Kvyat now for me Danny Kvyat is the leading contender for that seat if Pierre Gasly is dropped because he is a lot more experienced uh, compared to any other drivers in the Red Bull Academy and also very importantly the Red Bull team know Danny Kvyat they know exactly what he brings to the table they know what his say driving style was like and they know what to expect from Daniel in that car and you also have Alexander Albon who is the only other candidate I can think of now the reason I'm putting Albon in there is one because he is in the Toro Rosso car and I think for sure is a contender but also so far in 2019 despite Kvyat having more experience Albon has been better than Danny Kvyat he has you know out qualified him in the first two races 
and Albon has more points than Kvyat in 2019. And for a young driver that is inexperienced in Formula 1, he has performed quite well and already in the Formula 1 world is impressing. So if Pierre Gasly is dropped, I think it will be either Kvyat or Albon. I don't think they're going to go for someone who is not a part of the Red Bull Driver Academy. And considering their history of picking drivers from the academy, it would be quite stupid for them not to do it yet again. But what is my view on what needs to happen, say, right now, Pierre Gasly, or for the future? In my opinion, Pierre Gasly should be given until the Monaco Grand Prix to step up his performance because it has only been three races. We have to remember that, even though he has been poor in the first uh, three Grand Prix. It is only three races and he does have plenty of time to improve himself. And also, you have to remember, the Red Bull car is not, say, as good as it was at the end of 2018, where it could almost consistently go for a race win. So I think Pierre Gasly should be given until Monaco to improve. But if he's still doing this in Baku, Barcelona and Monaco, then after Monaco going into Canada for me, 100%, and I'll even make a video on it, you have to drop Pierre Gasly. But I think he should be given another three races because you never know at the next Grand Prix in Baku where strange things can happen. He could end up on the podium and really strike back against the people doubting him, such as myself. So in the next three races, let's see how Pierre will do. But after Monaco, if it's still going the same way with this guy, he has to be dropped, no doubt whatsoever. So I think all of us for sure going into Baku and also the Spanish and Monaco Grand Prix should be watching out for Pierre Gasly and seeing whether he is improving to keep that Red Bull seat. And for me, there is no doubt the next two, three, or even four or five races in Pierre Gasly's Formula 1 career are vital. Because it really could decide what Gasly's future in Formula 1 really is.